I'm here at Velocity Conference with James Turnbull from Docker. Hi. Hi. Thank you for joining me. My pleasure. So, how does container virtualization work, and why is it so important in the programming environment today? Sure. So, traditional virtualization um, works by having a uh, what we call a hypervisor, it's a layer that lives between the sort of whatever you're, you're building a virtual machine on top of and your actual virtual machine. And the hypervisor basically provides a sort of an abstraction layer and sort of does it, does all of the magic of dealing with the disk and the memory underneath it. And then on top of that, you put sort of operating systems and then your applications on top. Um, container virtualization is what we call operating system level virtualization. So it takes that, that hypervisor layer out and that sort of need for an individual operating system away. And basically your, your containers, your little virtual machines, sit directly on top of the operating system, which means two things that make really important about this. The first one is that they're very, very lightweight. So they take um, uh, you know, considerably less space and considerably less memory and considerably less CPU to run because they don't, they don't require this big abstraction layer. And the second thing is um, uh, you can pack lots more of them on. So you, you know, people who, who traditionally run sort of virtual machines on a, on a server, you, know, you might get 10x more containers on a server than you do virtual machines. So if you imagine if you're a, a CFO or something like that and you say, I want to buy $100,000 for the servers, I only have to buy you know, $10,000 for the servers, that's a pretty amazing sort of, sort of story. Oh, it's not a new concept, is it? It's not. Um, there's two things that, are, that, that we've done here that's sort of a bit different. Um, we, we sort of come from a heritage of, of uh, a bunch of different container technologies, things like Solaris zones, um, uh, right back to sort of IBM's sort of logical partitioning models. Um, and what the two things we sort of added on was we sort of said to ourselves, containers are kind of hard to use. They're not very user friendly. You actually needed to be quite a skilled engineer to deploy containers. So we said, let's put a UI in front of the container technology. Let's put a UI in front of these amazing technology features we get from the Linux kernel um, to make it any, something accessible to anybody. So big companies like Google, I mean, Google r r launches about 2 billion containers a week. And every time you type a Google search, you know, you're running inside a container environment. But they have some of the smartest engineers in the world. So you know, most companies are not prepared to sort of devote those sort of resources to deploying that. So we said, why don't we build something that, that allows that more accessible to those people? And the second thing we built around it is that, that containers really are just a sort of an interesting bit of technology um, and an interesting way of encapsulating workloads. They're not really useful on their own. So we sort of wrapped a workflow around it and we said, what people really care about is getting the code from their developers putting it into something that, that they can execute it in, in our case, a container, and then being able to deploy that to, say, a, a, you know, a, a server somewhere or to the cloud or something like that. So we, we wrapped a sort of UI and this sort of workflow around it to make it easier for people to be able to build the containers and then deploy code in them. Right, and so why are containers necessary? What kinds of specific problems do they solve? Um, I think uh, probably they're, they're, there's a bunch of different use cases they're, they're particularly applicable for. Um, I think the, the, the traditional use case of containers has been sort of what we call sort of hyperscale things. So if you're a service provider, um, like a Google or um, like an Amazon, uh, you can run a lot more containers than you would be able to run virtual machines and you get more bang from your buck for your, for your hardware. But the more interesting use case that we've sort of seen developers become interested in is that um, they essentially want to replicate the, the production environments they have, the technologies and the stacks they have. They want to be able to replicate that when they're doing their development. So they know they write their code, and they currently write their code maybe on their laptop or against a, a virtual machine somewhere, and it doesn't quite look like production. So when they actually deploy their code out to production, things don't necessarily work the way they thought they were going to. With containers being so lightweight, they can actually run containers that contain a version of their production environment locally on their laptop, do their development, and by the time they get out to production, they know that they're developing against the same thing that they're going to deploy to, which avoids the whole conversation between developers and operations people where developers go, I finished my code, here it is. And operations people go, no, no, I can't run this. It doesn't look, production doesn't look anything like what, what we need. Right. Now, how does container virtualization compare to other options like virtual machines a la Amazon? Um, we sort of don't make a direct sort of comparison. We, we, we think that um, Docker's kind of agnostic about what you run it on. You can run Docker on top of a virtual machine. You can run it on top of OpenStack or Cloud Foundry or Amazon. We're not really all that fussed. Um, we look at um, Docker as, a, as, as providing sort of a, an abstraction layer between the sort of targets you deploy to. So it makes, so essentially, you know, we don't really care what you run on. We just care the workload you run. And it's in a sort of standard sort of, and we, in the sense we use the container analogy, it's like, it's like a shipping container. We just care about that, that what's inside the shipping container will run. Um, and that sort of 
uh, I guess our our key differentiator between you know, we're trying to abstract away the, the the other types of technology. Right. Now, turning the corner just a bit, uh, what are the security considerations of container virtualization, and how do they compare to virtual machines and other options? Sure. So, um, uh, I think we're fairly transparent about the fact that containers are not as, I guess, as segregated as a virtual machine. A virtual machine, um, you know, has this hypervisor layer I talked about that abstracts away the under underlying platform. Um, it also has a whole operating system, um, which I guess we call it thicker walls between between your virtual machine and the rest of the world. Containers are much thinner walls because it's a bit more lightweight. Um, so, what we do say to people is that. Um, containers are ideal for workloads that are things like not root privileged workloads, so not mm -hmm. very highly secure workloads and, and not um, uh, workloads where you want to sort of enable root sort of access to things. So we say like it's perfect for an application service, but not necessarily for something that, that is sort of um, uh, more, more, has more security requirements. I probably wouldn't run a certi certificate authority inside a container, for example. Um, but you know, as I said, we're fairly transparent about that, and, and it's not really a security consideration of Docker. It's a security consideration of the kernel features we use in Linux, which are sort of if you have the right level of access, you can break out of the container and have access to the underlying operating system. So if you run the wrong sort of processes or Docker in the wrong sort, wrong sort of way, you will open yourself up to some security vulnerabilities. And for my last question related, how does Docker approach virtual security? So we've sort of built a layered sort of model. So we, we are aware of the sort of weaknesses of the Docker container as a sort of a thin, as I said, a more thin layer. So we basically taken um, a bunch of sort of uh, um, kernel capabilities and, and said, um, you know, what's the most secure way we can deploy a container? And, and what we do, for example, is we um, uh, we drop all of the all of the kernel all, all of the things you don't need to run a container. So we sort of operate by sort of a whitelist model. You, you only get certain um, levels of access. And then you have to, have to, at your choice, at runtime, you have to add in other things if you want to expose more you know, uh, ca uh, capabilities. Um, we also recommend that people run um, containers with tools like SE Linux and App Armor, which are sort of access control tools that allow you to sort of lock down what a, the, the process inside a container and what a container can actually do. And then we layer on another couple of uh, sort of uh, things like user namespaces, something we're adding to the to the, the container model. Um, to make it sort of more secure, um, and we, we look at it sort of like a like a, you know there's a container in the middle and then there's a perimeter of security things around it. Um, and as the product develops, we're hoping to sort of you know eliminate some of the the lower level risks we have now. Excellent. Thank you for talking with me today. Excellent. Thank you.